Hi, Dr. Kim. Welcome to the Women Waking Podcast. Thank you. Very exciting to have you as a guest and to hear more about your work in Chinese medicine, esoteric acupuncture, and intuitive medicine. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Excited yeah. to talk about that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, Kim, why don't you tell us about your work? What on a day-to-day -day basis, what are you doing with clients? What is your focus? What is sort of the, the essence and expression of the work that you do right now? Yeah. Um, well, I'm Dr. Kim Perano. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine, a licensed acupuncturist, a life coach, a meditation teacher, a medical intuitive, like the list goes on and on and on. So many things. Um, yeah. All the things. And so I found a way to kind of smoosh all of those things together into something that works for me um about i'm kind of splitting time right now 50 50 ish um with my private practice and so seeing people for acupuncture which can range anything from like pain management to spiritual growth um and everything in between there and then i also run a nonprofit called the integrative healing institute where we offer continuing education classes and then classes that some are available to the public but it's mostly geared towards acupuncturists offering courses because we have to do continuing education credits every two or four years depending on your license um that's really looking into that mind body spirit medicine um so it's that's kind of the theme of that so i like organize all of that and run that stuff. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. So Kim, could you possibly provide us a little, maybe 101 lesson on acupuncture? Because I've never had an acupuncturist on the show. Yeah. I've never had it. I've, I don't know how that's possible. I really have wanted to <laughs> and explore, but I have, I know many people that do what, what is acupuncture and how is it helpful? What does it do for our bodies and yeah. our, our minds? So acupuncture is a system of medicine. Uh, most often we're referring to the Chinese systems, but they're like, you can find acupuncture in a lot of East Asian countries. Um, there's like a little bit of difference between all of them. Japanese acupuncture is a little more popular than any other ones. So they'll like kind of look different and feel different. And there's different theories and things around how they move, but ultimately like it's been around for over 2000 years. Um, and the general principle is that we see the body and the meridians on the body. So there's pathways that energy flows in your body. Um, and anytime we have pain or disease or illness or discomfort or something that kind of comes up is telling us that there is a blockage or something is kind of amiss with the balance along those meridians. And acupuncture needles help to create balance so we can like put more flow into an area, close down flow in an area. Uh, we would call that stagnation when things get blocked. Um, people have deficiencies or excesses of certain qualities. We use a lot of very different words to explain what we're doing. So it doesn't parallel super well with Western thinking or Western medicine. Um, yeah. It seems really like out there, but it's just a totally different way of looking at the body and looking at things. It's not like an either or scenario. Um, so the process of getting acupuncture, like you would go and see an acupuncturist, tell them about whatever you wanted to work on. Like, let's say it was like low back pain. And we're probably going to ask you a million other questions about everything else in your life mm -hmm. and everything else in your body, because we look at the person as a whole person. So it's not just like, oh, you just have low back pain. It's that all of these other facets of who you are are also creating the environment for that low back pain to exist, right? So it's like everybody has a lower back. Not everybody has lower back pain, even if we all do the same things, right? Yeah. So we want to look at the whole person and all of the different things that are going on to get a diagnosis and to be able to treat you accordingly. Um, and we have, so like lower back pain would be your diagnosis in Western medicine, but there's 40 plus diagnosis in Chinese medicine for why you would have lower back pain. So it could be very specific like that, which is really cool. Yeah. Okay. And then the actual procedure is there are these little needles. Is that correct? Yeah. That go so in during acupuncture. And it, so what you just described, it makes me think that it's more about bringing, um, that the needle more so you said it released or can help energy flow. So it's more about bringing like at certain spots and it kind of creates some kind of, um, 
energy shift when you put the needle in. I used to think that it had like something on the needle that they were like poking you with, like, like they wanted a doctor and like shooting you up with something, <laughs> but no, right. Not necessarily. <laughs> if you're in Florida, like they can do injections in Florida. So they actually, like a lot of people will do herbal concentrate injections, which will just be like subdermally, like a, when you get a TB test, mm. that was just like a little bubble under the skin. Um, and in China, they can do all kinds of things that we don't get to do here, but here in America, needles don't have anything on them. They're just plain needles. Um, they're, they're solid. They don't have a hole in them. Like a needle you would get a shot with, and they range in size from like three millimeters long to 75 millimeters long and kind of all kinds of thicknesses. And it depends, you like, you would choose needle size and length and based on like the body type of the person and the place you're putting the needle in the person. So if we're working on like sciatica pain, that's going to be a bigger needle than if we're working on your wrist, right? Those are very different body parts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Interesting. So when the, the procedures that they do in China, if they were, if they were to infuse it with something, what would that be? Would it be almost like a supplement or something that would help with I think sometimes there are like, like lidocaine as part of that, which is like mm -hmm. a medical procedure that you can get here, but we're not calling it acupuncture, right? Yeah. Um, I know that there's also like different needle types and things like one of the videos we watched in acupuncture school was basically a video of like, here's some cool stuff that you don't get to do here. <laughs> and, um, one of them was uh, that sticks in my mind, at least was fire needling where they like took a needle, lit it like heated it up till it was like red hot like the needle was red like a hot poker yeah. and they used that to treat varicose veins so it would be like cauterizing and bleeding at the same time it was very intense whoa did it work it looked like it worked i have no <laughs> idea what the side effects of that are yeah. like, that. <laughs> like additional don't do that scarring it's a terrible thing to try on your own please don't do that <laughs> interesting interesting wow so Kim, what brought you into this line of work? What drew you to, because I imagine maybe you were thinking of pursuing medicine in general and, and then maybe kind of gravitated towards acupuncture. Was it vice versa? You first did acupuncture and then led you to medicine. It was kind of a complete fluke. Uh, <laughs> I did, I have, I have changed my career path many times in my life. So I started out like out of high school doing television production, like worked at the news, was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Ended up going, like starting my undergrad in business management. And that was like so boring that I was like, I'm switching to art. So I switched to art, did sculpture and jewelry making. That's what I got my undergrad in. Ended up working at an insurance underwriting job, which was like a soul suck of a job for an artist to do. <laughs> But it was the first time in my life I had like a disposable-ish income. So I had started going to yoga and got really into yoga. I was like, maybe I'll go do teacher training. And one time the yoga studio had a naturopath come and do a talk. And he was like, and I went to this talk and he was talking about like how everything in the body is connected. I think he was also a chiropractor. So he was looking at the like dermatomes of the different spine the different places on your spine and how those connect to specific organs and all these other things. And I just remember sitting there being like, I know this already. Like, I know that this is true. I totally know it already. I ended up working with him for a little while because I had all kinds of like digestive stuff going on that my doctor was just like, here's this pill. It turns off your gallbladder. Like, we don't know if it's your gallbladder, but you can try it anyway. So I was like, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, and so I saw this guy for a while only to find out that I was like lactose intolerant, like the simplest solution you could ever come up with. Um, but I was totally hooked. I was like, this is so cool. I want to go to school to do this. And so I started looking into naturopath schools A naturopath is a MD, but it's an N instead of an M and you can't get into medical school with an art degree. <laughs> So, really? um, oh, no. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do another undergrad in biology or whatever. And in my search of naturopath schools, I came across acupuncture schools. And the acupuncture school was like, you have this number of units, like you can just pretty much sign up, and it's pretty much the same thing. Like you don't get to write prescriptions, you don't get to give Western medicine diagnosis, but like you can do a lot of the same things. And so I signed up for acupuncture school. I'd never even had it before had no idea. And that's, that's how we're ended up here. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then once you got into school and started pursuing that, 
did you, what interested you, you about it? Because what you're saying, Kim, it makes me think about something that came to mind as you were talking is that our body has a story to tell and it's never just one thing. You know, it's not, you can't just, if you want to hear a whole story, you can't just pick out one little segment and try and decide something based on that. Right. And so when you were describing like the gallbladder thing, I think so often in medicine is that, you know, especially in our med medical system, people are overwhelmed with clients and, you know, they're just, their schedule is packed. And so they don't really have time always to look at the entire picture. It's yeah. like, okay, this sounds like this, let's just try it. Let's throw a pill at it you know, and no, you know, disrespect to any medical professionals, but it's just the way that we've come to be because we're just so overwrought with, you know, medical needs. So yeah. was that something that drew you towards, because naturopathy is more sort of holistic, right? It's about mm -hmm. looking at the bigger picture and using things that rather than just focus on one thing, sort of are more broad reaching in terms of what they can detect, what they can help with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I found fascinating about like working with that guy was like, oh, we did all those like different tests and all kinds of cool stuff, which like looking back on was very, I think there's sort of a skip that happens is like Western medicine can be really broad or really quick to diagnose in a way. And then some of the more natural medicine people or like functional medicine gets very pinpointed right? So you're like looking at the small picture. I have people who've come to me sometimes like for um, bloating after eating or feeling like you have a lot of uh, food allergies and things like this. And like one of the first questions I asked them is like, how much food are you eating? Which is a thing a lot of people skip because if we're not eating enough food, you're going to react like that all the time. Mm. So if somebody has been dieting for a really long time and experiencing that, like step one is to like eat enough food then look into food allergy things. So we have like a balance to, to find there where we have to look at the big picture and the small picture kind of simultaneously to see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's always important in every facet of life is to look at, you know, sort of the macro and the micro, because there's something yeah. to learn from, from each of them and each are important. You don't want to neglect either. Totally. And then you, your focus, you call esoteric acupuncture. Tell us about that. Cause that's one of my favorite words <laughs> very much into the, you know, out there, um, kind of cosmic, different spiritual concepts and applications. So what is esoteric acupuncture? Um, so there are many systems of acupuncture, right? So you have like traditional Chinese, Japanese, five element, Korean, like there's all kinds of things. Um, that people do in very different ways. And esoteric acupuncture is sort of like one of those things. Um, I realized like I've been practicing this way for a while, but I didn't have the words to explain it. And then came across Mikio Sankey's um, esoteric acupuncture books. And he, I think he's not teaching classes anymore, but he was, and I I came across it a long time ago, didn't take the class, and then finally got the books, which are like all out of print and like, I had to do a lot of digging to find all of these books. And a few years prior, I got on a meditation retreat trip in Brazil and like had this like huge download in one of the meditations that I was doing of like how to do acupuncture. And I drew all these pictures. It was really cool. And then I find these books like four years later and it's like the same pictures I drew and the same stuff. So like, I was like, oh, this is what I've been doing but he has the words to describe it. Um, and he gets into like the, the Kabbalah tree of life and chakras, like there's all kinds of things. But the basic premise is that we can actually use acupuncture to help our spiritual growth and how we grow and evolve as spirits in human bodies. Um, Cause we can't like leave one behind if you want to stay here at least. Um, and I had been kind of practicing like that already is more, which I had just called intuitive acupuncture where like, I don't practice when you go to school, you learn specific points and point protocols and things like this, because you have to pass your test. And these are some of the things that have been studied in a more like Western scientific model. Um, but really when you, after you get licensed, you can practice in any number of ways based on whatever works for you. Cause everybody's methods are going to be a little bit different. Um, so I've found that that's what works for me where I'll talk to somebody and then 
intuitively see or know or feel um, like which points on the body to use. Um, and we're looking at, if you're familiar with like, we have the physical body and the causal body and the mental body and the emotional body and the subtle bodies, like mm -hmm. basically these layers of us that exist energetically outside of our physical body. And the acupuncture meridians are actually on the etheric body, which is like really close. It's like the first one outside of the physical body. Okay. So like your physical body and then like a millimeter out allegedly is your etheric body and the, so the meridians exist in both places um so we could and when you adjust things in a spiritual realm it kind of drops down into the physical realm so like these yeah. treatments will look more like when i talk to somebody about like what's going on in your life path like what kind of things are you working on maybe it's somebody who's having a hard time speaking their truth and there's a pattern for that um if we're like looking to like feel more safety in the world maybe we do need to balance some chakras so that they're kind of functioning more optimally um and it kind of expands and expands and expands into like all these areas it's really cool usually it's a longer treatment where it's like a front and a backside treatment so it's like nearly two hours it's, it's a lot of work um but that gives us the kind of it's like just opening the door to that new space that this person is like looking at moving into. So we can kind of step into like, oh, this is where I'm headed. This is what it feels like to be in alignment with myself or connected with myself, with my higher self or whatever you think of that as. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's an, sort of an alignment thing or regulating yeah, that would be a good way to think of it. Yeah. Okay. Or like, and, or yeah, it's just like opening, opening or maybe closing, but usually more of an opening of like what, you know, whatever that person needs at that moment. Interesting. Okay. I'm really compelled by this notion. So we have layers, energetic layers that go mm -hmm. out of us. And I've had someone on the show in the very beginning of this podcast talk something because she is an energetic um, healer. But so do you just have to work with your intuition or do you, can you sense energetically like where someone, cause they are, they're not going to know, right. Where they're needing like a release or an adjustment or regulating. Um, so, and then I'm also, okay. I have so many questions. And then also like, how do you <laughs> with chakras? Because, okay, we're, we're very familiar with the seven chakras, but then I've also heard of like the, you know, eight through 12 chakras that are like above us and like yeah. behind us. And are, are you familiar with those? Do you mm -hmm. work with those? Yeah. Can you share what those are? Um, yeah, so like you have your chakras in your body, which is like one through seven, and then you have chakras out of body. Uh, technically we have like unlimited chakras, like it just keeps going. It keeps going up and it keeps going down. Um, forever? <laughs> yes, for, uh -huh. forever, right? Wow. Until, until you reach God or whatever it is you think cool. of, right? The uh, stepping stones. <laughs> totally, but we can't like live in those out of body chakras too much because we we have a body yeah for now <laughs> we gotta, we're, we're like, with you it. can't live in your 20th chakra because <laughs> it's just not possible but we can kind of exist in our eight through 12 chakras too and then i've seen it described as some um like your eighth chakra is helpful to connect you with like your divine self your source self with god the creator universe whatever quantum field type energy is like where we kind of connect to that and get alignment there. Your ninth chakra is where we might like exist while we do service to another person or with another person. Um, you're like 10th and 11th are like kind of, you know, if people are like telekinetic or can meditate and float off the ground, like that's an 11th chakra kind of thing where there's like all that magical stuff. Um, and we will have experiences of that, even if you're not a meditator or like not even aware of that stuff. Um, where like being in your eighth chakra might just feel like when you have that feeling walking down the street randomly one day, like everything is good right now. Everything is okay. That like peaceful, calm, mm. connected feeling comes over you. Like that's sort of an eighth chakra feeling. Okay. I like that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Could yeah. stay there, but I guess we can't stay in the eighth chakra forever either. Right. We could try. 
but yeah. we're going to exist in all of them. Just like, yeah. you're just going to go up and down throughout the day. And yeah. I think that's kind of the uniqueness of the human experience, right? Is <laughs> that we're, we're, we're experiencing so many different things at once. We're experiencing being a, a body, but we're not just a body and learning about that. We're actually spiritual, even though we can't see all these things. And as humans in the body, we're very attached to what we, the five senses, right? Totally. And it's hard for us to connect with and, and comprehend the things that are on the other side of that. Right. Yeah. But as you're speaking to the things outside of that affect our physical body and affect our waking life. And it's so fascinating to think, um, you know, I'll give an example. I just had this weird experience with like a rash that broke out. It was like hives mm -hmm. and there's no way to explain it. And even if, when you look it up, it's, it's such a weird name. It's like pretty, Pretiasis rosacea or something. Do you know that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Pure puritic rosacea, maybe. Maybe it's like yeah. a weird spelling that sounds like the name of like a dinosaur. Um, <laughs> but anyways, and it, they can't explain it. And whenever there's something that science can't explain, I'm like, I wonder what the connection is to things other than just you know what can be explained in the body and totally. how it's being impacted. And, and even things like, you know, skin irritations and such seem to often be something beyond just, you know, what we ingest or what we're exposed to, um, that it can be beyond that. Yeah, absolutely. And so I find a lot of, for a lot of the people that are end up being drawn to my work are ones who experience things like that, where it's like there's symptoms, but there's no real cause of them. You've gone to every professional in the book, like, nothing seems to make any sense. Nothing seems to treat it really well. And like, I think of those things as often like a manifestation of like spiritual alignment being off where, mm. um, so if we think of that, like picture of like all the different bodies, um, that essentially like, I like to think of all disease, illness, or like issues that we have in life are like signposts that we're like off a little bit, mm. right? So we, yeah. there's something to learn here. There's something to learn through everything. And that can be like a hard pill to swallow sometimes, <laughs> um, but it gives us a lot of ownership over our healing when we start to look at it that way, when we can go, okay, like this sucks. We're not denying that that sucks that that happened to you, mm. but like your healing is still your responsibility after whatever occurs and then you can move forward and these things often tell us about stuff that's out of alignment for us um and that starts out in like a spiritual way which we don't really have a lot of awareness of some people who meditate a lot might have that awareness and they can clear it before it drops into the physical body but it sort of starts as this like little rift out here and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Maybe like as it gets closer, we have that feeling of like something's not right, but I don't really know what it is. And then it'll kind of keep coming down until it manifests in some sort of physical reality type of way, whether like in your body or like in your life, right? Like a tree falling on your car. <laughs> oh no. Like all these things could kind of happen. I've had that happen with an apartment. Oh, it rained in my apartment. Like I went on a, meditation retreat weekend thing. And I came home and it had like rained in, in all of my apartment. And I was like, huh. Wait, it rained in your apartment? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, cause it a tree rained. went through it? No tree in that apartment, oh. <laughs> but it was just like the roof leaked and it rained all in my apartment. Oh, wow. And I was like, huh, I grew so much this weekend. I broke my apartment. <laughs> time oh, for wow. me to move. It was like a very clear message. Like you oh. broke your apartment. Let's go. Time to move. It was time for you to go onto a new place. Totally. And I started looking for a new place. And a week later it rained again, like so bad that it went into my apartment and into the apartment below mine. Oh, and it rained on everything in that apartment, except my stuff. None of my stuff was damaged. It was like damaged, like I could stick my hand through one of the walls. It was so bad, but it was on none of my stuff. And I was like, oh, I got the message. Like now this is for my landlord. Like that's his message to deal with now, like, but I got it. So I'm out of here. We're good. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nothing was damaged. That's wild. So you're able yeah. to get out of there with all your stuff. Yeah. Wow. It was like in between the coffee table and my couch. It was wild, That's like the precision of this water damage. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. That stuff is so fascinating to me, the way that things, things can happen. Totally. So, okay. So I hear you about that 
physical manifestations can be when we're operating in a way that's out of alignment with maybe like it may, I feel like it's just kind of like an indication, like, Hey, this, this isn't serve. Maybe it's, it's something's too stressful. Something's too, there's a certain energy. That's not good for you. Is that what you would say? Like, if you're like, maybe you're seeing somebody that's not in alignment, or maybe you're living somewhere. That's just not something about it. Isn't like the right frequency for you, or maybe you're in a job that's not. So then we'll kind of be like, okay, it's fine. This will be fine. But then we get something physical and it's like, Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. Cause I mean, we pay attention to pain. That's yeah. Why Ooh, you're right. Like, we we really won't pay attention to other stuff. Right. If everything's going okay. Like, you know, I guess it depends on your like commitment to what you're doing. And I think like the, the Hebrew definition of sin was actually like an archery term that was just like missing the mark mark. Right. Yeah. So, I right. love that. I love that analogy in that description well apparently yeah. sin means in like greek or something i might be wrong it means missing the mark yeah yeah because it's just missing the mark so it's not like this like textbook list of like these are the sins that you have it's actually yeah. like you came here for a specific purpose you have a specific way of, that you're supposed to be being in the world and if we're off we're going to see it and it's going to give us some feedback and it might be like a little headache or it might be like falling down the stairs. Like there's going to be some type of feedback that's going to show us that. And the more we start to like look at it that way, even when we might have something that's not going to go away, right? Like maybe you do have a terminal disease or illness. Maybe you are going to have chronic pain for your whole life. As we start to kind of look at it, like this is something that's teaching me something, then our like quality of life starts to shift too. We can have a different experience of it. It doesn't have to be something that causes us suffering because as we try to push it away, that creates that like tension. It amplifies the pain. It amplifies that experience. And we get more of an experience of suffering around it. Whereas if we can kind of look it in the face and lean into it a little bit more, we can start to work with it. And then we have that different experience, which can be huge. Even if we still have all of that pain, we can have that experience that changes how we relate to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that brings up a, another concept you have, which is really kind of honoring pain and not like not um, resisting pain. Right. Yeah. So we just, you said we notice pain, but we also like tend to label it bad and say like, oh no, I don't want this rather than kind of really, you know, looking at it and ch tapping into it, embracing it and saying, what is this trying to tell me? Totally. I think like the best practice for that is like pretending either like you took a bunch of acid or you're a four-year-old kid, like be creative with it, <laughs> like have fun with it. It doesn't have to be this like super serious thing where I can go like, okay, like my neck hurts right now and I can close my eyes and like go into it and be like, what color is this? Does it play a song? Does it have a message for me? Does it go anywhere else? Like, what's it telling me? Um, in that like really playful and creative way, like kind of take some of the charge out of it right away, right? And then we kind of can move through it. And if you practice that, I have people do this all the time. I have one patient who has like an eye that twitches all the time, like constantly. I hate when that and happens. I taught her, like guided her through that process of like following it and going into it. And the next week I saw, I was like, how's your eye? She's like, it still twitches, but every time I do that, it stops. Oh. So I don't know how it is because it stops if I do that. <laughs> um, so I was like, okay, well, you still have it going on, but now we have a different experience of it. So it's a little less, like it's still there and it's still annoying and frustrating, but like that person's also working in a really stressful job that might not be totally aligned with yeah. like what she needs to be doing or how she's showing up at it, right? If we're not speaking our truth or we're not setting a boundary, like stuff's going to come back and show us that things are a little bit off. Yeah. And that also gets really annoying <laughs> when you have a situation and, and you get out of it and you're like, whoo, that's done. And then bam, it's right back. Like a bee that won't go where like a fly, but you're like, yeah. okay, like you leave a job or you leave something you, you know, and then all of a sudden the same situation is that's happened to me many times. Oh yeah. Really? Really? I just, I just relived like an entire relationship it, like it was like a three-year relationship the first time and then this recent time was like condensed into six weeks it was like the same person you know like the same whole thing that happened the same person with like different habits like 
you know, it was like the first person was really lazy. The second person went to the gym all the time, but it was still the same thing. Oh. And so like looked really different, but it was the same thing. And it's like, like we keep getting tested to be like, okay, did I learn how to deal with this and like speak my truth and just like cut it off when it was no good. So it was like six weeks. That was a good, that was a win for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so interesting. And I love that you bring that up because I was just talking on a show recently about how relationships can be such an amazing opportunity to, and such a catalyst for like, you can learn so much in a very finite period. And like so much comes to the surface because, you know, these people come into our life because they're, they act as a mirror. They're showing us something about ourselves or something that's, you know, kind of not addressed within us that we can't, we might not see just on our own accord. Right. So the other person comes in. And then, so just as you spoke, you can be with someone for three years and maybe still not get the lesson. And, but then, but after three years, you're like, huh, you know, you break up and you consider it, you reflect on it. And then the new relationship came in. And after, like you said, six weeks, you're like, I got it. I see it. <laughs> totally. I'm going to move on. Did you, did you, are you done with that? Did it end oh, up? Oh yeah. That was okay. <laughs> it was a person who lived like out of state. And I was like, actually, I am going to cancel the trip. I'm not even coming. Oh, it was okay. a very big, like, this is, we're done here. We're good. So that felt good. Disappointing, you know, but like, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. So yeah. all these things coming in to tell us something or whether it's pain or people, all these different things, nothing is without reason, right? Totally. Nothing like there's no injury. There's no, you know, symptom. There's no relationship person job that isn't, you know, it's bringing, well, it, the idea is that they're all bringing a gift because ultimately everything's a gift like pain. We wouldn't really normally be like, Oh, this is so great, but it's a, a, allowing for some sort of growth that's needed. Right. Exactly. And like, you know, everything has find some people get really like irritated with that idea. Like everything's a gift. We have the, everything has a reason or a message. Like sometimes that reason or message is like earth is a dangerous place that you need to pay attention. Like it doesn't have to be like the end all be all like spiritual growth, awakening, reasoning for why you broke your foot. Like sometimes yeah. it's just a simple thing. Like a stove burner is hot and you needed to learn that. Before <laughs> <you>. <laughs> yeah. Totally. That's funny you see that. Cause I went on a road trip, um, late last year for a few months and I kept seeing all these like caution signs and like, you know, and I was like, Oh no, like, do I need to be worried? And then like, I, I almost got into an accident and then like this other thing happened. And what I took away was exactly what you just said is cause I'm like, Oh no, is this a bad omen? But then I, was, I realized, no, it's just, I feel like I'm being told like, be mindful, like, be yeah. careful. You're out there on the road by yourself. Like you got the literal signs. Yeah. <laughs> literally, I got signs. Like, just like, keep your eyes out, girl. Like <laughs> things can, the world can be dangerous. Like we don't want to oh, lose you yet in your body. It's like scary here. Like <laughs> yeah. stuff can happen. Was it place for the most part? <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, so funny. Wow. Well, and then the other part of that, that I was thinking about is so sometimes or often, you know, um, symptoms or things going on with us can be an indication of being off the mark. But what do you think about though, when it's a, with spiritual awakening, sometimes we'll have, it's almost just like a, like shedding your skin. Like sometimes I feel like you'll have something going on. That's not necessarily, you're not off line, but you're just, you're, you're changing almost like a snake. Like you're totally, changing. do you think that that's a part yeah. of it too? Totally. Absolutely. It's like change doesn't feel good. Right. It's yeah. like the question I get asked all the time is like, oh, is it going to hurt getting acupuncture? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> no one likes that answer at all. But like, we all have different experiences of pain, right? Everyone has a different pain tolerance. And every day is going to be very different. Like how you experience an acupuncture treatment or how you experience like going to therapy, right? Like you're not going to cry your eyes out at every therapy session, but sometimes you will. And it's going to be really painful. Like some acupuncture treatments, you're not going to feel at all. And some of the times you're going to want to scream at your acupuncturist, like, because yeah. change doesn't feel good. It's yes. uncomfortable because we're changing, you know, like things are going to be different and the way we've been doing, you know, it's like, we're moving out of that comfort zone bubble. And I had, I go to a meditation class a couple of weeks ago. I had this like visualization of it, like you know, we are in this room and that's sort of like your comfort zone bubble. And 
like trying to get out of that room is like sort of like running into the wall a thousand times, right? As we're like, you know, you're running into the wall, running into the wall, running into the wall, like it doesn't feel good. Like, and eventually you pop through, but like, who knows what's on the other side of that wall also. And so then there's sort of a like recombobulation period with growth. There's a really cool like Dallas creation story that explains that really well, which is like the giant pangu. Have you heard of this? No. Can you please tell? Is it the same yeah. as a giant panda? Because those no. are cute. Oh, <laughs> Maybe somebody tells it as a panda. Uh, basically, like the story starts out as like at the beginning of the universe, right? The whole universe was encased in an egg and it was a swirling mass of chaos that was encased in an egg. And at the center of this egg was the giant pangu and he grew and grew and grew and grew and grew until the egg was too small for him. And then he got irritated and mad and was like raging and flailing around because it's too small. Eventually finds an ax and like hacks his way out of this egg. And everything that was light rose up to be the heavens and everything that was heavy rose down to be the earth. And he held down the earth and held up the heavens with his body for the next 18,000 years until he died. And he was a fixed in place and he died. And then his right eye became the moon and his left eye became the sun and his skin became the grass and his muscles became the mountains and his blood became the rivers that, you know, all the parts of him, his teeth became the gems beneath the ground and the little ticks and mites that were living on him became the human race. And so <laughs> the story of the creation. And we can use it as a really good metaphor for the healing process, right? And we go through this many times in our life. It's not like one, one shot and you're done. It's like over and over and over again. Um, where like I've definitely had the palpable experience of like the egg being too small, right? Where you're like, get me out of this. Yeah, you just you like, just sense ah. like things are closing in, and and I think it is because you know when he started, it was a plenty enough room. Totally. You know, for yeah, for like that energy. reality was fine, and then he yeah. grew. He grew so much that the reality became too small. That's like an important distinction. Yes. And then he hacks it open, and now it's like, oh crap, like. I have to fix this in place. Like we have to find that stabilization there. And then eventually it feels stable and like everything gets recreated into new new reality and new stuff. But the important piece here is like the mites becoming the humans. So that's like the garbage junk stuff. Like as we go through healing, we remove a lot of stuff, right? You like dump, we get rid of things. We get rid of old patterns, old beliefs old clothes, like whatever it is. Yeah, we, we purge, we shed, we release. Right? And where we end up like creating that new reality is when we reacclimate it in a healthier way, mm-hmm. which we can do. I do like life coaching with shadow work and that's part of it. That's something we wanted to push away. Now we have to look at it and reintegrate it. And that way we become more whole and then we have this new wholeness that we can move into. Yeah, absolutely. And when you, you know, speaking of, you know, we're being fearful of change. We I think humans do have a tendency to fear change and to be, you know, scared of change and uncomfortable with it. But the, your description reminds me that I think what also is hard for us about change is that just as that analogy you use, whenever we start something, like we get a new home or we have a new relationship, or we have a new job and it, it's this perfect, beautiful fit. And we're so comfy and we feel so good there. And so when we get to the point where we're outgrowing it, we're still, we don't want to believe that because we love it. We loved it. It was perfect at once. And, and to think like, how could this not be right anymore? But I think it's, and I think humans are becoming more hip to this, which is the concept that evolution is an infinite. It never ends. Like, it's not like we're ever going to find like this one spot and it's like, here I am. I'm just going to kick back for eternity. Like we're always going to be challenged to keep growing because growth is literally infinite. God is infinite. He never stops. Just goes, 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 goes. And we're always seeking new, you know, expressions of itself. So when we are resistant to that, we're, we're, we're literally resistant to life because change is life. right? Right. But again, I think it's, and as a therapist, I'm a therapist, a mental health therapist. And that's what a lot of my work is, 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 you know, offering some compassion and, and offering people to be compassionate and patient with themselves when they have that resistance, because it is an attachment and also, you know, a, a regard for what you've had, what you've known. And to release that is, can be sad. There's a grief around it. Totally. Even if it is a relationship where you're like, this isn't working, it's been three years. 
there's, you know, it's not for me anymore. I, I'm out. I can't be in here anymore. There's nothing left to, there's no space left to grow here. There's nothing left to learn, yeah. but it's what I've known for three years. And, it, and I know this person, I'm going to miss this person. Mm-hmm. And that relationships I think are the hardest sometimes because totally. you get to know another person, you know? Yeah. I remember like some sex of the city episode. I just love that show. And like <laughs> one of the lines was like, if you love somebody and you break up, where does the love go? And like that stuck with me forever. Like it's just like, yeah, you know, because you have this thing and then you have to let it go. And then then you enter that empty space that's like, oh, mm-hmm. what's this? <laughs> yeah. And it really it is it just feels like the most tragic thing because it, it truly is. It's unlike so many other things, you know, you maybe you can still kind of keep it a little bit, but when love ends, it's so hard that it's you can, there's so I think it's that and somebody said this once I think it's so true that with love something is born and then it dies and of mm-hmm. course nothing can actually die but it's like something is created together and then you when you split up you literally kind of take back that energy again so whatever it was is no longer mm-hmm. and that's the tragedy of it is that where does it go well it just isn't really anymore yeah. it was it was something that was a fusion of two beans and then the beans part and you know, there's any, cause you want to hold on to it. You want to sort of still honor that love, but you know, like, I know I've done that, like still reached out to exes and been like, Hey, remember how in love we were? And, us, and they're like, I don't want to go there. Like I have to move on with my life, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I mean, sometimes you can still be like, Oh, that was so great. And I have such great, you know, regard for you, but it just really is sad to be like, how can something be there and then just be gone? Right very, it's very Buddhist. Yeah. Do you ever help people with that? Like, cause I know, um, I've had breakups where, and you know, more recently when I've been more in a spiritual realm and worked with energy healers and I've had people help me with like cord cutting stuff where you're, Mm -hmm. the idea is like, you're releasing some of that energy that's kind of sticking around, just kind of still floating around you. That's connecting you with them. And that can bring you in that lovely place where you're just like ruminating and remembering and can't feel like you can't get this person like out of your, totally. like, you know, consciousness and sphere. Yeah. Can acupuncture help with us with that? Totally. <laughs> oh. uh, I think of it too, like what acupuncture is like can help. Like I work with a lot of people with mental, emotional health, like a lot of stress, big life changes, whether they're positive or negative, right? It's like getting married and buying a house and having a baby, like are good things, but they're totally stressful because it's totally new. And our physical body has a strong reaction to that, right? We have that like stress response and we have that stress response, especially when we have a breakup, right? Like your whole reality changes and then you have to like recombobulate yourself back um, and like kind of turn on that like parasympathetic nervous system again, because we'll be in that like fight or flight state for a while after a breakup, I think, yeah. where we're having those like strong reactions. So it's also like bringing the body along for the ride with yeah. any of this, like with the spiritual growth stuff, as you're going through therapy, like all of these things like go very hand in hand. I did a therapy program a couple of years ago and it was really like this nine week, super intense thing. And there was one of the therapists was also a body worker. And I had a bunch of resistance to like really kind of like going in and really doing the therapy. It's like, I'm fine. You guys are all crazy. Uh, (laughs) And like, I had a body work session with her and I swear to you, I thought this woman was trying to kill me. Like it was the most painful massage I've ever had in my life, but she like got me to cry. And that was a turning point for me, like in the therapy program, because it was so much stuff is like lodged in your physical body. We have a really cool way of describing that in Chinese medicine with like the five spirit stuff. Oh yes. Can you please tell us about that? Oh my gosh, please. That sounds amazing. Five elements, five spirits. Yes. Yeah. So one of the ways that we like diagnose or like look at disease is through the five elements. So we think of the five elements are water, wood, fire, earth, and metal, and they create each other. They keep each other in check. When that whole system is flowing well, we have balance there. And then every element has different things associated with it. They have a season, they have a time of day, they have a color, a smell, like a sound. They all have a spirit that's associated with them. Um, And this is like, so we can look at everything through that lens, like literally everything in the entire 
creation you can look at through a five element lens, which is really fun. Um, but the five spirits are kind of a really nice way of looking at the psyche. Um, so how we mentally, emotionally function in the world um, and, and spiritually too. So like, so in Western cultures, right, we have a soul or a spirit. It's sort of like one thing. And then Taoist culture, we would have the five spirits. So they're the Shen, the Hun, the Yi, Po, and Zhur. And each of them are connected with an element and each of them have different functions, which is really cool. So the Shen is the fire element. It's connected with your heart. It's our ability to like have compassion. It's the most closely related with like the idea of a spirit or soul. Like that spirit would come in and out of every lifetime. Mm. If we're getting reincarnated, like you have the same Shen every time. Um, and it's like a very ethereal yang type of, like it, it has a lot of movement to it. People who don't have a like secured Shen are somebody who we would kind of think of as if it, and it, all of these things come in a range. So it can be like a phone call with bad news is gonna disturb your Shen, like where you don't feel quite like yourself right? Like mm. something happened and it kind of goes off all the way to like severe, like mental health presentations. So like a severe Shen disturbance person is like, um, Ted Bundy. He's my favorite. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cause they're like kind of fun and interesting, but when you look in their eyes that you don't see them. So we see the mm. Shen through somebody's eyes. When somebody feels like they're really present through their eyes like that's their shen that you see like the light of another person is your shen mm -hmm. um the next spirit down is the hun and that's related to our wood element which is the liver and gallbladder um i think of these things like sort of in a project management landscape like the shen is what gives you the like light bulb of an idea of something like an insight and the hun is like the architect who's going to draw up all the plans to like make that thing a reality. Mm. Um, when you drink your hun leaves, when you smoke weed, your hun leaves, like all of these things, like it's- Wait, it's where, where's, the <laughs> <laughs> where's the hun? Where's the hun on the head? The, the hun lives in your eyes and your liver. So like okay. when we're sleeping, the hun is responsible for our dreaming. Uh, when you're awake, it's responsible for like clear vision, literally and metaphorically. So being able to like see reality clearly. Um, and so if we like do drugs or get drunk, um, like that spirit just kind of, it's like, see ya, I'll see you when you're sober. Interesting. So there's, cause I've always thought of that in general, that like when we're engaged in things that are just really polluting our, us ourselves emotionally and physically that our, our spirit, our soul can leave the body is what totally. I've heard. And I relate to, so I'm in recovery and I can relate to that because that's, was a big reason I got sober as I started, I felt that like I could feel almost that like absence of like a departure of the soul. And it doesn't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not we kind of run from our animal nature, which is just like, yeah, get laid or fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, place. I'm not here for this. I'm going to yeah. step aside while you all so the Hun's like, it helps us with the plans, right? So if we have an issue with the Hun, we might like have ideas, but we can't really get the plans off the ground where we're like, oh, I really want to make this business. And then that's as far as it goes. Like you have the vision of the business, but you can't make the plans that you could put into action. Um, and so then the next spirit down is the Yi, which is one of my favorite ones that people don't talk about enough, um, which is that center point. So we have the Shen and the Hun, the Po and the Zhur, and the Yi bridges them both together. And this is our earth element, the spleen and stomach. The Yi is really affected by disordered eating and eating disorders or how we like look at ourselves. It kind of creates codependency, uh, people pleasing, stuff like that can be a Yi disturbance problem. We can feel not centered. The Yi is like the bank manager that gives us the money to make this project happen. So it's setting our intention. Mm. So like a, a Yi person might have like the idea and have the plans, but can't start on them. Like there's no intention behind it. Or maybe they start and it just goes nowhere because the intention is totally lacking. I know that feeling. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> it's frustrating. So, right. the, so the investor, that other part's the investor that's like, here you go. Here's going to, here we're going to, you know, actually give you some clout exactly. to take this on. Totally. 
Um, mm -hmm. I teach a whole class, like a whole eight hour class on the Yi and it's related to like intuitive eating uh, because like things like dieting or um, any kind of restricting of food can do that because what it does is, especially if like I was a kid who went to Weight Watchers when I was like 10 years old mm -hmm. and how much that messes you up as a kid because it yeah. makes you ignore your own body or your own reality. So I'm looking outside of myself which is sort of that codependent dynamic and people pleasing, right? It's like yeah. what you are doing matters more than how I feel about it. Um, so as we bridge that, like, you know, it's like gaining more of that investment in ourselves, then we have more stability in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and then our next spirit down is the pole, which is the metal element, the lungs and large intestine. Um, there are seven po two eyes, two nostrils, one mouth and two ears is what they're related to. We okay. get our po once we breathe. Like, so your first breath is when you get the po and like, you know how people poop their pants when they die. Like that's the po leaving also. <laughs> uh, oh, it's, very, it's very body related. Oh, so okay. like our shen and our hun go back to source after we die and the rest of the spirits get kind of recombobulated with the earth. They're like, the Poe is like your animalistic nature. It's related to your soma. So the somatic memory animals are all Poe. Like they don't really have a Shen or Hun, like a cat. Yeah. They're just eating and pooping. They're eating and pooping, <laughs> procreating. Yeah. Like they have instincts that are really on fire, right? Like mm -hmm. a cat knows how to hunt a mouse and it has that like body instinct. So that's what the PO is. And this is the aspect mm. that's related to how we get pain in our bodies. Um, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. So we see this with like fibromyalgia a lot of the time mm. or other diseases or other people who have pain that doesn't have a diagnosis. You have this like chronic pain, no diagnosis, some history of past trauma or like mental diagnosis or something there. Um, and this is like the metal element is like metal and it's also gemstones. So stuff that's like this richness that la la lands beneath the earth, right? Where mm -hmm. there's like specialness and preciousness related to that. So like a Po kind of overall theory is like um, appreciating the preciousness of the moment where we're able to like- And that sounds more like a dog or a cat or an animal. Like they're oh. actually just like, cool. I, yeah, it's I'm just, just now. The sun right now, and that's all I care about. There's no future, Life is great. no past. It's just now. Right. It's just now. Yeah, and that's and, an interesting. Okay, I like this because it's an interesting concept because it's still an aspect of a soul. Like we know that animals have souls, but there is that question of like, yeah, but then why don't they? Why don't they want to like you know go run for president or like create a civilization <laughs> like something fancy? Like what's what's different between animals and us that humans do have this like this system of like have an idea and then get you know way figure out ways to bring it into life and then like work on that idea you know like you were saying yeah. which one which is the one that like is the investor that helps us to actually move forward with our plans the ye yeah, and then the, the ye. would be like the workers on the job site yeah that's like actually literally doing the work to make it happen mm -hmm. so if we have an issue with like the ho or the hun they're like work together right the architect and the building building guys are working together all the time. So if those are off, like this is going to help us understand like how we're not creating the things we want in our life in yeah. the way we want them. And then with the po, like, and the soma, the somatic memory is where we get that like pain that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So there's pain. And this is sort of related to the idea of like metal and gems being like hidden beneath the earth. Maybe that person has like benign tumors. Mm -hmm. um, so it's basically like where we're storing those painful memories. This person might come from a family that like swept stuff under the rug. We don't talk about Uncle Steve. Yeah. We still let him come to dinner, but we don't talk about him. Um, and then it develops because it's not being fully processed. The body just holds on to it until we're ready to do it. Um, and I've had a lot of success with people with like this type of stuff where like, and their treatment so like another aspect of this is like they're not going to respond to treatment really well so they're mm -hmm. like oh i have this sciatica pain it never goes away blah 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 i've done all of the things like you treat them for sciatica pain in the way that you would regularly treat somebody that usually works most of the time and like nothing nothing and nothing and nothing and then we do more of a spirit treatment and things change a lot 
because it's related to that. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's manifesting physically, but the cause isn't physical. Yeah. Um, and the jure spirit is related to the kidneys and bladder, the water element. Um, this is like wisdom mm -hmm. where we get wisdom, but the wisdom of like the collective. So it's the collective unconsciousness. I think of this as like, you know, the fantastic fungi movie where you, like all yeah. of the, all of the mushrooms communicate under the earth. Like that's mm -hmm. all of our jurors. Like it's all connected. That's our oneness space where like everything is connected. Um, that's your DNA and your genetic programming. Um, you kind of, Britney Spears in 2008, that was a jure problem when she like had a mental breakdown and smashed the car and shaved her head. Yeah. yeah that was so it's like, when you burn through the jure, like that's the end of stuff. Like it's very serious. And so those people who have a jure thing going on will be like 120% or zero. Like you might see a lot of like caffeine or stimulant use. Like it's like the single mom working an 80 job, 80 hour a week lawyer job, like with three kids doing PTA, having dinner parties, going to Pilates every day, like blah, 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 like all of the stuff totally headed towards burnout or the dude who's 40 and lives at his mom's house in the basement and never gets off the couch playing video games. Like he's going to use stimulants to get up and do anything. So they're both. Like, Are you talking about your ex-boyfriend now? <laughs> definitely talking about my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> but that person also had like a lot of past trauma. So there's a lot of stuff that's not worked through or not healed or not um, incorporated in a way that it could be. So these things show up. So that's how we look at mental health and emotional oh, health. That's fascinating. Yeah. Can you work on people? Can you get us just, and so everybody has these five spirits. Mm -hmm. Are they, cause, okay, here's the other thing that's interesting. They, everything's kind of the same thing, but just illustrated or presented in different ways. And that yeah. I, while you were talking, I was reminded of tarot. I'm a tarot reader. And a lot of these sound like different archetypes within the tarot deck. And that also reminded me of astrology where it sounds like some of the different signs, like where I think of something like a Taurus is more like, I forget the, the one that's like the, the investor, the one that, so Taurus yeah, is like, yeah, totally is a Taurus, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, well, how are we actually going to implement this and do it? And let's focus on it. Let's go, you know, more yeah. earth energy, you know, so Virgos are like that, sorry, Capricorns, but then the air signs are the one that are just sort of like, oh, wouldn't this be nice? And like, let's think and like, let's get like spacey in the realm of like creating, which is, and each is important, but when they work together, that's when actual creation can happen. Totally. And I always yeah. think like, I have like a whole series of this on my like TikTok account. And like, mm -hmm. some people got a little pressed about it because mm -hmm. it was like the misinterpretation of like, oh, now I have another thing to deal with. And it's <laughs> like, no, it's not another thing to deal. You already had this stuff, right? Yeah. You already had it. This is just another way of looking at it, which gives you a whole other like basket of healing things that you yeah. can do to address it. So like, if you're listening to this and it's like, oh, that's me. Like, it's just another way of looking at it. It's not like taking the place of anything else. It's just like this other vantage point that we can look at it through. Yeah. And they're all, they are all helpful. I know there really are so many, like I just Last week, I um, had a friend who wanted to help me with like gene key stuff, which is a thing and um, human design, which provides like a totally different lens and a different perspective. Yeah. Um, and, but then there's also, you know, the concept of like past lives and, you know, ancestral. And so there's so many things. And so it can, when you first get introduced, it can be overwhelming. Like, okay, so how am I ever supposed to know what this is about? But <laughs> to your point, it's more just like, well, there's always a ton of different resources that we have, but just take one at a time and look at it and see like what resonates with you, what doesn't, and see if it's something that you want. And I think all these different modalities work better for different people. Certain ones are more relatable and someone's going to be, you know, looking at these, this concept of the Chinese medicine and five spirits and say, I feel this, I get this. And I feel like I can utilize this more than like tarot, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask when you, for, with the five spirits, when you're working on somebody, when you're doing acupuncture, can you get a sense of if one of these five spirits is sort of more present or less present? And is that a thing? Like is, is our, out of these five spirits, do some people have more strength in one of the spirits than another? 
I would think of it more as sort of the opposite of that. Like, <laughs> so I'm totally wrong. Okay. No, but like the same idea, right? We'll notice one if it's missing. Okay. Like if everything's all together, like it's just all together. I kind of think of them kind of like chakras, right? They're like all in a line. If one was really tiny or I guess with chakras, it's more problematic if it's really big and if it's one of these like lower body things, um, right? Like that's the one that has the issue that's working or it's not flowing the way that it should. Um, so we'll notice when they're like missing or they're not functioning optimally is when the symptoms, symptoms show up. Um, so you like, if everything's there and all in alignment, like cool, nothing kind of steals the show. There's not like, yeah, there's not like an excess. You don't have an Got excess it. shen, but you could have a missing shen for sure. Oh, okay. I hear. So yeah, like it's like a fine, it's like a tuning thing more right. than like a growth or it's like just yeah. tuning it out. Okay. And Got a lot it. of like the pathway to doing that work, like is where people get a little hung up. It's like, it's not a lot of doing, right? It's not doing much at all. The, the metaphor we often use is like the five spirits are like little birds sitting in a tree. Mm -hmm. And if a car alarm goes off underneath, they're all going to fly away. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the small, like, it doesn't take a lot to get things out of balance. They're very sensitive things. And so how do you get the birds to come back to the tree, right? Is like, turn off the car alarm. We have to create that ca calm environment and that like openness. And then it just aligns itself. Um, so there's not like when I teach this class to acupuncturists, people are like, oh, tell me how to fix it. <laughs> it's like, no, you just have to fix it for that person, right? Like whatever it is, maybe they do need some like cognitive awareness of what's going on. All of the acupuncture points have names and they're really fun and can be really helpful to like explain to people like this point is doing X, Y, and Z. And like, this is what it means. And then they can muse on what that means to them while they're having a treatment, which can help that like calm space to come back again. Yeah. Wow. Well, Kim, this is all so fascinating. And these are all so many new concepts I didn't know about. So I'm so excited <laughs> to, to get to have your expertise and your wisdom around this and to have, you know, some new concepts in my, my toolbox. Totally. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. And if people want to work with you, how do you, I imagine you can't do your work virtually. I do like virtual, um, energetic healing treatments. Okay. Um, and then the spiritual like life coaching that I do is another avenue of that, which works more with like, uh, there's a lot of shadow work, um, working with like things that trigger you and how that comes up. And a lot of the Chinese medicine bridges into that because it's really based, Carl Jung, it's based in like Jungian psychology, but yeah. he studied a lot of Chinese medicine. So a lot of the concepts are the same thing, different words on them, which is really yeah. cool. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of avenues. And then there's like the classes at the Integrative Healing Institute. Most of them are open to non-acupuncturists. So if you're like curious about learning more of that stuff, um, that's a great way to learn more. Okay, great. Yeah. And if people want to find you and find out how they can work with you and read up more on these, some of these concepts, where's the best place to find you? So lionsheartwellness.com and then on all of the social media things, Lions Heart Wellness, um, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. Okay. Where you'll find my like practice and then the I'm gonna find you. <laughs> the integrative healing institute.com is the place where we host all of the classes. Oh, cool. Okay. Perfect. Well, we'll put all those links in the show notes and people perfect. can go to your website and check you out. And you're on TikTok. So you do videos and stuff that mm -hmm. kind of like share some of these concepts. So yeah. Learn more I finally about got the playlist feature. So it's really easy to like Ooh. learn all about them. <laughs> wow. Wow. You're all in it. You're into all the, the high tech stuff. <laughs> Just That's copy awesome. what the 20 year olds do. <laughs> Wow. Well, Kim, this was so much fun. I would love to continue this conversation for totally. another episode because this yeah, was, this was it. fantastic. And I love that we were able to explore concepts like relationships and healing and that it's all interconnected, you know, like we don't have to separate like emotional pain from physical pain, from mental struggles. Yeah. You know? 
our brain thinks of it all the same way. Yeah. Yes. Good point. Wonderful. <laughs> all right, Kim. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care.